Hey everybody, what up? It's a hot day out here in DC area. It's like a swamp, 100 degrees almost. Um, not yet, but it's close. Anyway, in this video, I wanna talk about uh, unit testing, right? Um, as a software developer, it seems like we spend the majority of our time writing unit tests. That's like one of the things that I feel like uh, for me, it's um, the biggest, probably the biggest pain of the actual code, like writing new features and all that's pretty easy to do, but then like, trying to unit test edge cases can be pretty complicated when you're dealing with like dependency injections and stuff like that. Um, so I guess in this video, I just wanna pose the question, like, is it not, like, do we think that unit testing is really bringing a huge value? I mean, obviously it does bring a, a, a value. I would say probably a pretty big value, but like um, some people go by like test-driven development where like literally every line of code has to have a test for it. Um, that's called 100% code completion or 100% code coverage. And I've been on teams, uh, there was an insurance company I worked for, an $80 billion insurance company or somewhere around that, and we were working for three years on a sales application, and it was all JavaScript based, using Knockout, and uh, had like a million components, we were writing all the tests in Jest, and I, I think back, yeah, Jasmine, and, and a bunch of other things, but um, we had it 100% code coverage, like it was on the back end too, so it was csharp.net on the back end, and uh, that also had to have 100% code coverage. So anytime you would go to make like basically one line change or add like the tiniest little enhancement to the code, you'd end up having to rewrite like, you know, 15, 20 tests or something like that. So it's like, oh, you know, it took you a long time to do that one little tiny thing, but it's like the majority of your time was actually spent writing the unit test. So that said, we go to release that thing and uh, this is after three years and it's got half the performance of the application we were trying to replace it with. So clearly like, the VPs and all that were pissed off. And then um, in addition to that, like, it all, it, like when I say half the performance, like I mean it did half the friggin' sales. So it was slower and it did half the sales of like what it was trying to replace. And there was over 30,000 bugs on that project. So I think it's normal to have a lot of bugs, but in that particular case, that's where I was like, well, holy shit, like what was the point of doing all this 100% code completion or code coverage to have this result, you know? So you can write bad unit tests and that's the big thing. So it's like, I think that there should be like probably a threshold of like 75, 80% is probably reasonable. And then anything over that, I mean, you should have QA, quality assurance people testing the application and the dev and staging environments and all that. And then you should also write, uh, I think end-to-end -end integration tests. So I've always been a proponent of like these end-to-end -end integration test using things like um it used to be like selenium and then now we're using like cypress and puppeteer and all that and i got courses on that by the way if you want on code hawk um but that's a good tool i think to like scrape and automate because then you don't have to deal with like having to mimic what javascript is doing behind the scenes you could just do it through the browser so um that's why we have those little captures you know those little captured bot capture peep things because people like me used to be able to write a quick script and take all your data um, anyway, that said though, um, I think the end-to-end -in -in integration tests actually make much more sense because you're actually testing the true product. You know, you're testing, okay, did I click on this button? Did it do what I expected it to do and all this? Whereas like the unit test is like, you click on the button and I've just mocked all this other stuff and then the button does this or, you know, it calls this and did that function get called and all that. It's like, to me, it's more important that the function got called, it returned the right shit and it worked, you know? So, um, the, the problem though with these end-to-end -end -end integration tests, especially like with Puppeteers, Cypress, Selenium, any of those things that you're gonna be using, is that they're slow as, they're slow as hell. So it really slows down your build times. And that's where I think that like, there should probably be some sort of separation where you don't make the code build require a passing, you know, end-to-end uh, -end integration test. In my opinion, it would probably be better to just have that run on a separate process, generate a report, and then come back to you um, before it fails. Now, if you're releasing code to prod like every day, then I think you just have to rely on the fact that, you know, these builds are gonna take a long time. You have to check all your, your balances there. But uh, if you're not releasing every single day, which uh, hopefully, I mean, these days with this iter iterative development, we are, if you're truly agile, I think it's okay to release every day. But if you're sort of agile waterfall, like, releasing every day or even every week is a effing nightmare um but yeah my point being is like i think an end-to-end -end integration tests make much more sense than actual unit testing i do think unit testing should be necessary 
but 100% code coverage is probably unnecessary and I think it slows down development. So yeah, and then the biggest downside to the end-to-end -end integration test is the fact that it makes the build really slow. So if you have hundreds or thousands of tests, it could take like 25 minutes for a build to pass. And that's a long time to wait to find out your code didn't, you know, didn't build properly and didn't get checked in. And by then you're on another task and, and you have to go back and check out your branch again, figure out what the hell went wrong, re rewrite the test or whatever. But um, yeah, all that said, I, I, I've seen them both. I've seen test driven development where you write a test before you even write in logic and all that. Uh, this is all just, um, I think, personal opinion, my own and other people's as well. But uh, that yeah I don't know what do y'all think I mean do we need these tests <laughs> if you're learning the code I recommend you check out my website codehawk.com my courses are fast to the point without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Pluralsight and Udemy one of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now professionally. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.